All right, let's bring in my panel to discuss. Wendy Patrick is joining us. She's a Republican political analyst and an attorney. And David Morey, a Democratic strategist and author. Thank you both for joining us. So, Wendy, this compromise includes uh, just around uh, $1.37 billion for new fencing along the border. So that is far short of the $5.7 billion that the president wanted. And it's actually less than the deal that was rejected in December. So, Wendy, how does it look for the president if he does sign this and he does accept this deal? Well, the president will no doubt see it as a down payment on a wall that is eventually going to be built. He just said that today. You know, this compromise is a sweetheart deal just in time for Valentine's Day. It's mm. too good to pass up, given that the last time the president decided not to sign legislation, it ended in a 35-day shutdown which had collateral consequences nobody could have predicted, the president could have predicted. So I believe he'll sign this. He telegraphed that, not only even in El Paso last night, but also today in saying he doesn't think it's going to happen again. But he is weighing options as to how to build that wall, and he has some available to him. I have no doubt he's going to press forward and use them. All right. Uh, Wendy, I just want to stick with you. How is this a sweetheart deal for the president, though? Because he is coming short of the funds that he requested. It allows him to save face, Michelle. It's very important for the president to make sure that his promises made, promises kept theme is preserved throughout his presidency and as we head towards 2020. By agreeing to this compromise and being able to say it's a step in the right direction, even though we know it's accepting less money that was available in December, it allows him to at least believe his base is doing something. Because right. remember, one of his other big platforms was jobs, and he can't put people out of work again by causing the, the government to shut down. David, what do the Democrats get out of this deal? Where is their victory here, if there is one? Well, I, I take the challenge, too. It's not a sweetheart deal. A little bit disagreeing with Wendy. I, I think the art of a deal hit a wall here. Remember, huh. he had a chance <laughs> uh, about a year ago to take a $25 billion uh, offer on the table from the Democrats in exchange for DACA reform. $2.5 billion was the compromise Vice President Pence put on the table and the president sort of turned against that, $1.7 billion when the House was not controlled by the Democrats. So, you know, I think in some ways there's less here. Hannity has already called it a garbage compromise. Ann Coulter, Rush Limbaugh will be putting pressure on the president not to sign it. I think Wendy's right. I think he will sign it. We lost $8 billion during the shutdown, 34 days. He went down eight points, according to most polls. This is not good for the president. And this is I think the Democrats, you know, in some ways look like they've won by the metrics that I began with. You know, $1.375 billion looks a lot smaller than other numbers that would have been on the table. Um, this was a deal put together by experts. Input based on facts from the Department of Homeland Security, expert appropriators, and, and it's, you know, in some ways it's the way government should work. It's an okay compromise given the bipartisan pressures here. And it'll be, I think the president has the legal ability to get money from other parts of the government. But that'll set up division within the Republican Party and certainly opposition from the Democrats. The Democrats kind of look grown up during this process, it seems to me. This has hurt the president politically, and I think people in his party generally know that. Wendy, we, uh, to David's point, uh, a lot of the more high-profile Trump supporters or Republicans like Sean Hannity do not seem to be happy with this deal. Uh, I get what you're saying, that uh, the spin is going to be uh, finish the wall, not build the wall. And, and we saw a movement to that extent at the El Paso uh, gathering last night with a banner read, finish the wall. Do you think that the president will be able to sell this to his base? I do. And here's why I think it's a little sweeter than both of you. I, I do understand where you're coming from. I negotiate for a living also. Remember where we were just last week. Not a single dollar for the wall. That's what Nancy Pelosi said. I understand we've changed right. the terminology. But it's still the same thing. We're talking about border security. The president was in a corner. He really didn't have the upper hand coming into this negotiation. It was cooler heads prevailing in Congress that allowed them to basically get the Democrats to back down from some of the other things they wanted in this deal, which makes it sweeter than I feel like he would have had otherwise. Yeah. And you can always say it's a step in the right direction. He can always call it a down payment. And he does have other options available. Frankly, he was never going to get all the money he wanted for this wall. At least he has a lot more today than he had last week. All right. Uh, David, to Wendy's point, 
there were other things that the Democrats could have pushed for. We know that the president was open to addressing DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Uh, during his speech in January at the border, he said that that was something he was open to, open to extending those existing protections for around 700,000 or so immigrants who were children when their parents came to the country illegally, and also to hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants who have uh, legal status under the temporary protected status, that he said he was going to extend that. So should Democrats, David, have used this leverage that they had to address DACA as well, to perhaps offer more money and then get some kind of compromise on other issues like DACA? Well, I think this is a down payment on DACA, too. I don't think this was the moment with a bipartisan appropriations group to get the big deal that was on the table a year ago. You know, I, I disagree. I mean, look, I think in retrospect, the president should have had a bigger vision than build a wall. I think he should have taken that $25 billion DACA deal. I think we'd be better off in terms of national security and in terms of this nightmare of a problem that we have ahead in terms of immigration. I think he should have also attached building of the wall in the first two years of his administration to infrastructure, which this country desperately needs. I think the president actually needs to think bigger. You know, he sounds like he thinks big, but in some ways, this is really small potatoes here when you look at the scope of the government. We're a country that's built on vision. I think he needs a lot more vision. The Democrats are going to go after him, by the way, the 2020 contenders. Um, they're going to say we need more vision in this country. And there's some there's some vulnerability I think the president has by just fixating on the wall to please well, his political Well, David, David, to be fair, the wall is one part of a multi-pronged approach uh, to tackle Ill illegal immigration and to reform immigration. I mean, it says so. Uh, in, in several documents, including WhiteHouse.gov, where there is a plan of what the president is really asking for, and this is just one part of it. Yeah, but Michelle, if you look at the White, let's think in terms of communications. Look at the last 60 days or so with the Trump administration. The only thing they've really communicated is the wall. I mean, and that usually helps a government and a leader because it focuses the people that get the messaging. In this case, I'm not sure that's a big enough message. Remember, 40% of the American people support a wall. When you start attaching government shutdowns, it goes into the low mid-20s. This is not necessarily a winning political issue for the president. And it's not a, it's not, it doesn't address the big problems, the bigger problems we have in the United States. Sure, we should be diligent and have a strong uh, border. And, and I think this bill goes further than we have been in that area. But I think there are bigger issues on the table the president, frankly, ought to be taking hold of. Uh, Wendy, there's a creative proposal from Senator Ted Cruz. I want to get your thoughts on this, uh, both as a Republican strategist and as a lawyer. He is suggesting using the seized assets of a convicted drug cartel kingpin, El Chapo, mm -hmm. to help build the wall. There's about $14 billion that uh, likely will be seized. Should those funds go towards border security? Can they go towards border security? And if they do, that's Mexico paying for the wall. It's an interesting argument um, that I followed with, uh, with some interest, uh, because I do believe that it also is on the heels of another idea of let's just look at asset forfeitures from other sort of narcotic smuggling operations. There's drug money available to then divert to use to build the wall. I don't know what kind of legal challenges, obviously they'll be tied up in court for years, but Ultimately, there perhaps is some mechanism for diverting some of those funds. I don't know whether specifically El Chapo's funds, um, but you and David both made a great point earlier I want to pick up on. The economy might be a bigger issue than the wall, and that is another reason I think it's great that the president is focusing on how to not shut the government down again, because it's all about jobs. We're doing great. Let's keep people working, and let's find creative, out-of-the-box solutions like this to go ahead and fund that big, beautiful wall he says eventually is going to get built. David, very quickly, what are your thoughts on uh, using seized drug money from El Chapo and, and other convicted felons and, and that approach? I really hate to agree with Ted Cruz, but I like creative, <laughs> out-of-the-box ideas and there solutions. There we go. <laughs> and that's what we need more of. Yeah, All right. I mean, we really do. Uh, we're a country built on those things. All right, uh, so we'll end it on that positive note of agreement. Thank you so much, Wendy Patrick and David Morey.